Yeah, hi there everyone. <coughs> Today I'm going to give you a bit of a demonstration on how to do um, mail weaving. Essentially, um, the old saying of chain mail is a bit of a misnomer because essentially, because um, mail itself is actually a definition of chain, so chain mail is actually chain chain. Go figure. Anyway, basically what I'm going to do is um, show you how I personally do it. Now, this is not necessarily a professional way to do it by any sense of the imagination. It's just showing you some of the tips that I've picked up along the way to make it easier for myself and maybe speed the process up slightly differently to, um, uh, to how I originally started. Now, the weave that I'm going to use today is the European Forum 1. Now, I've got a piece here which is a, a European Forum 1, which has a single piece in the middle with obviously four pieces on the outside. Okay, and what we're going to do, I'm going to show you two ways of actually joining these pieces up. Uh, the first way is the way that I originally started with, which is a little bit time consuming and can be a little bit frustrating. And the second way, which obviously I picked up at a later stage um, just from, through Googling on the internet. So from the start, what I do is I have a mandrel, which is uh, essentially a 10mm bolt. Um, which is about 250-300mm long. Now usually what I do is I put put one end into the drill and the other end, it's got a, I don't know if you can see it there, a small drill hole. Um, you can see the hole right here. So what I do is I poke one end of the wire there and I put put one, one lap of wire around it and then I basically turn the drill and coil it up. And what I have when it's completed There's a coil that looks like that sitting on the mandrel, obviously with the with the wire wound up like that. Now, once again, what I do is I take that that coil off the mandrel or bulb, and then once again I've got this what looks like a bit of a tightly wound spring. Now, here's here's where the trick comes in. Now, when I first started, I used uh, wire cutters. Now, the wire cutters that you get have got basically a diamond cut pattern. They cut like that. So you have the bottom drawer has got that sort of angle on it and the top drawer is opposing. Now that leaves a bit of a V in the end so when you actually join the mail up it doesn't butt properly. So what I found at um, my local hardware shop was a pair of aviation snips. Now if you, see, if you look closely at the end of them they're actually a straight cut. Now that allows a s two straight faces to butt up against each, each side. So what I do once again is just take the aviation snaps and just cut, holding tightly onto the end, and the result is a couple of rings. Once again, I can cut a few more there. Now this this is certainly a lot quicker than the way that I originally started with the um, diamond cut um, pliers or wire cutters because essentially they would only cut one to two pieces at a time. So once again this allows me to cut a number of them. Now for the purposes of this demonstration I'm using 16 gauge wire which is galvanised. So it's, it's not a hard wire by any stretch of imagination, it's reasonably soft. So once again I've got these, these rings in front of me. Now the next stage is to start making my form one pattern. Now I've got some rings here that I prepared earlier. Once these are actually out of the cutter, they're slightly offset. So what I'll do is I'll butt them up against each other. Obviously it's, it's a bit hard to do with your hands, so I'm going to use a set of pliers. Now these ones are just a Leatherman style tool, uh, which I'll just grip one side of it with. Now most people grab two pliers. Now in my situation, I've found that it's easier to use a spanner or a crescent to use to get the other side of the ring because you don't need to grip it too hard, you just need to align it. And once again, if you, it saves a little bit of energy and there's your completed ring. And if you look closely at the, the two ends, they're nicely butted up so they won't just shake apart where uh, a diamond cut will um, with a bit of wear it'll shake and separate. So what I'll do is I'll cut four of those and then I'll get a ring that's already been cut 
and I'll use my present my spinner to slightly separate the rings but so they're still in line and then what I'll do is I'll thread four rings onto that and once again just nice and gently but butting it up so we've got four rings hanging off one center ring and once again if we put it up to the other four and one that we did slightly earlier on they sit nicely together okay now is where the where it gets interesting because we start to join these two pieces together now using some of the separated pieces that I've done earlier what I'll do is I'll show you the original way that I learned to do this now that was by laying nicely out two four and ones and doing a sideways stitch which is essentially going oops, it's going down from the first four across and then up to the second the second four now this as you can see is a little bit fiddly and can, can be a bit of a pain when you're stitching it back together and it does tend to make a little bit of a mess and you've got to sort it out but once you've sorted it out you'll have a stitched sideways piece of mail so there you go that's a completed piece of mail not uh, not big by any means but um, let's just have a look at the the other way that I picked up on doing it now this is generally what I found when I was doing bigger sheets what I found was it was easier to create strips and stitch the strips so what I'm going to do now once again I'll split a, split a piece but the way that I'll join is slightly different I'll get the four and hold it up so that I've got two rings at the top and two rings at the bottom then I'll stitch the two rings at the bottom and then I'll do the same with another piece and two rings at the bottom so what I'm essentially doing is making a mini chain now I'll hold it up it's a chain that goes two one two one two one two one two and I'll continue doing that just with some form ones that I've prepared earlier once again two at the bottom and two at the bottom again there I have another four now once again I can stitch those together and a little tweak to get the rings aligned and I have a longer chain okay now with two with two that I've I've got here one that I prepared earlier I'm going to now join the two together very similar to how I stitch the sideways stitch what makes it easier is you're working down rather than across and once you've got the first ring it tends to stabilize the the actual male pattern so there we go we've done the first one and once again it's a bit fiddly but now that we've done that one the second one is so much easier and so on and so on and you can just keep keep adding additional rings onto it and increasing the length until finally you have a weaved pattern and there you go it sits relatively nicely